Cue the heavy metal. <clears throat> I said, cue the heavy metal. You're watching the Preppers Bunker Outdoors. Today, we are going to start a series directly comparing the Becker BK9, the SE Hungless 2, and the Shadow Tech Python. These three knives seemed to be close enough in length, blade length, thickness, and weight to be directly comparable and to fulfill the same role. So throughout the course of this series, we are going to see which knife does it the best. Now we were going to include a knife from Ontario, but due to the length, thickness, and weight of it, it just didn't seem to add up quite as closely as these three knives do. So what we're going to do today is we're going to look up close at each of these knives and compare their specs and set the stage for the rest of the series. This is the table of destruction and you're about to be in for a treat. This is the battle of the mid-sized choppers. This channel is funded entirely through sales at my website beachandtactical.com where I sell a lot of things, mostly rifle slings, but also dog accessories and survival gear. Uh, also, I have an Amazon store where I have listed the best prices and prime deals on products that I have reviewed, stand behind, and most of which I still own. And also, I do do a Patreon. Patrons make this channel as great as it is. All of the links to those will be in the description box below. The SE Hunglis 2 comes in at a weight of 20.8 ounces, a blade length of 8.38 ounces, a blade thickness of 3 sixteenths of an inch, a blade steel of 1095, an overall length of 14.5 inches, and an MSRP of about $150 and $100 to $160. Now, it does not come uh, with a raw finish, nor does it come with these orange G10 scales. I did strip the finish off of the knife, but the scales are factory SE scales directly from SE. You can buy them the same way I did. The knife comes with this nice Kydex sheath, and at $150 to $160, this package is really a bargain, especially considering the quality of the Kydex sheath it comes with. Now the Kydex sheath that it comes with comes just black. I spray painted mine as you can see. The Becker BK9 comes in at 16.4 ounces with a 9 inch blade. The blade thickness is 3 sixteenths of an inch. The steel is 1095 Crovan which is actually 170-6 Sheridan. The overall length is 14.75 inches and the MSRP runs from about $90 to about $120 depending on where you shop. The sheath that the Becker BK9 comes with is this basic nylon sheath made in China. It really honestly works quite well for what it is but it's typically one of the first things that's usually upgraded on the Becker and is likely part of the reason why the knife can be sold so affordably. Well, there you go. The Shadow Tech Python is a bit of a different beast. It comes in at 22.6 ounces. The blade length is 8 inches flat. The blade thickness is a quarter of an inch. The blade steel is 8670. The overall length is 14 inches. And the MSRP is $188. You can get this knife from Shadow Tech directly. Um, it is a little bit different from the other two because although it is a production knife, it is hand ground and hand finished. 
uh, it's a little bit, uh, it's in a little bit of a different category, made up in Columbus, Ohio. You can see that the sheath that I got has this American flag printed on it. This is not their standard, uh, offering, but being that they are handmade and really semi-custom, you can get little changes like this, I believe, from them if you shoot them a message. This is set up with their multi-position clip, uh, which can allow you to wear any of their knives in multiple different ways, and they threw a molly lock on here for me as well. This knife is a bit of a, a black sheep in this group, as it is the only knife that's a quarter inch long. It is slightly heavier than even the Hunglis II, but being that it's a bit shorter than the other two, I felt that it was still a good match and that it really fit in the same use category of the other two knives. Let's look again at these three knives directly next to each other and again at the specifications of these three knives so that you can get a better idea of just how well matched they are. So there you have it. I believe that these three knives are truly epic or legendary. Every one of them is at the upper limits of what can be carried comfortably and easily by the regular person into the woods and used for an incredible range of tasks. There are a few tasks that you can't do with any one of these knives and that is what has earned uh, at least two of them their reputation for versatility. The Hunglis II specifically, you may remember, I've already tested extensively. I'll put a link to it right here. I was one of the first, if not the first person to ever break a Hunglis II, and the amount of effort that it took to break that knife uh, was almost impossible to envision happening in a real life scenario. All three of these knives are just as tough as can be. Um, the Becker I've actually had a couple more issues with and it might be going back for a warranty um, but I'll talk about that later and maybe we will uh, put the Becker BK9 through the same type of testing that we put the SE Hunglis 2 through. That will all be in a future video though and I believe that we'll also do the same with the Shadow Tech Python for science of course. But until then, please stick around, please subscribe. All of these knives are gonna be going through a lot of two by fours. It takes a lot of work, it takes a lot of time, but the results are, although not scientifically perfect, certainly worth uh, considering. And uh, if, you, if you want, consider joining my Patreon as well. Uh, my Patreon is really what makes stuff like this possible. Like I mentioned, it's a lot of work, it takes a lot of time. I have to buy a lot of 2 by 4s and uh, build things like the Table of Destruction here. And then destroy things like the Table of Destruction here. So, uh, special thanks and shout out again to my patrons. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. I'm sure a lot of people will have ideas for what knives I should have used. Um, if you have a knife in a company that you think should be included in this competition, it's probably not included in this competition because the manufacturer sucks. Because at this point, basically everybody knows, all the manufacturers know about this channel. They know about what I'm doing and they choose uh, not to want to be here. So, keep that in mind. I look forward to talking to you guys in the comments section below. And I hope that you have a blessed day.